Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. I figured I'd do a review on this album because one, I'm a big fan of Kendrick's work, and two, I've always kind of wanted to have my own segment where I can review anything that I want to, whether it be movies, TV shows, albums, video games, you name it. I love reviewing things. Like, I think Letterboxd might be my favorite app in general, but that's just only limited to movies. I want a place, like a platform where I can talk about anything and everything, so I figured why not start with Kendrick's newest studio album. It can also work well to, as a follow-up video to my last one where I ranked every single Kendrick Lamar song from worst to best in my opinion. Check that out if you haven't already. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. I think this might be my new favorite Kendrick album. It, it's so hard to say because that could just be recency bias talking, but wow, this album is amazing. It had a sudden yet very simple rollout for its release. Kendrick posted a formal letter basically revealing to the world what the title is and the release date. He dropped a single, the fifth part in his The Heart series, posted the album cover, and then boom, the album came out. No dilly-dallying, a pretty straightforward way to get people excited and hype for the album. And you bet I certainly was. I invited like 13 to 14 people to my house for a listening party, and we all just sat down together with some snacks and just listened. Returning from a five-year of music hiatus, he came back loud and grand with the first track, United in Grief, even directly acknowledging the 1,855 days it's been since Damn. He goes on talking about what he's been dealing with and basically how he's getting through life since we last heard from him. Talking about his spending habits, with lines like, bought a couple of mansions just for practice, and I bought a Rolex watch I only wore it once, I bought infinity pools I never swimmed in. He even goes on to mention his newly famed cousin, Baby Keem, and how he bought four cars in four months. Kendrick also talks about coping with sex in the second verse, introducing a character with the moniker Green Eyes. The general basis of this first song explores the idea that everyone has one thing in common, grief. And the difference between all of us starts with how we deal with said grief. And this song is giving us a little insight on how Kendrick's been dealing with grief. The second song, N95, is just a straight up hard-hitting banger. He talks about how people can sometimes wear a metaphorical mask made of temporary things we're infatuated with and act fake, living a lie. We're not being real with ourselves and those around us, and when we take off this N95 mask, you In my opinion, this is the most commercial song on the whole album. It's like the album's humble or DNA, and I love it. The next song, Worldwide Steppers, is what I consider to be the most underrated track on the whole album having some of my personal favorite lines on it, like playing baby shark with my daughter, watching for sharks outside at the same time, life is a protective father, and writer's block for two years, nothing moved me, ask God to speak through me, that's what you hear now, the voice of yours truly. The mindset he's rapping from expresses this feeling of racism by recounting the times he slept with white women and seeing it as revenge while his ancestors are watching. He also says this generation's killed freedom of speech and that I might as well write my will because I think yeet is mid. The next song, Die Hard, is just so good. It's a mellow jingle that is probably the best summer song to play with your friends in the pool. Kendrick talks about his problem with opening up and being honest in relationships because he carries the mindset that he won't be loved anymore after being vulnerable about his life. This is a common theme throughout the album, basically displaying Kendrick's internal battle with getting therapy. By the end of the song, he comes to the conclusion that being honest will make him a better person. I really like the features on this song. I think Blast does a great job and Amanda Rayford just makes me want to boogie. Moving on to the next track, we have Father Time. And this? This right here is arguably my favorite track on the whole album. This song is a masterpiece. Kendrick talks about his daddy issues and delves into the toxic masculinity engraved into each generation, and discusses why the absence of a father, or even the presence of a bad one, can be the problem in gang culture for black men. This line right here basically encapsulates and summarizes the whole song. Daddy issues, hid my emotions, never expressed myself. Men should never show their feelings, and being sensitive never helped. His mama died, I asked him why he's going back to work so soon. His first reply was, son, that's life, and the bill's got no silver spoon. Sampha is incredible on this song, and in my opinion, the best feature on the whole album. His chorus is so hypnotizing and really lets the listener feel the emotion set in this track. Next, we have Rich, the first interlude. This is just Kodak Black talking about the journey of his upbringing in the rap game and his concerns about the problems of his past. He's not really rapping, it's more like spoken word over a slow piano pattern that progressively gets faster and faster. Although I prefer the other interlude over this one, I still do like listening to this one. Rich Spirit is another mellow but sexy song. It's basically just Kendrick responding to all the haters, saying that he's keeping his ground and reminding himself of his own qualities to stay true to himself and keeping a rich spirit. Something I really admire about Kendrick is his ability to turn life experiences into art. Stop playing with me before I turn you to a song. That's something I'd love to be able to do. We cry together. Do I even need to say anything for this song? I don't even think I need to say anything for this song. This isn't even a song. This is basically just a movie, but without the visuals. Listening to this song in public has to be one of the funniest things I can imagine. It's like, Be my f***ing keys! I paid for that shit, bitch! No, you didn't, you broke-ass bitch! Stop being a fucking snitch! You don't make me talk about your fucking hemorrhoids, bitch! You better shut up, bitch! You know, you know I fucking love- <laughs>
Oh. Purple Hearts. The last song on the first disc and the first song and where I didn't really find myself messing with as much as the others. I still like it, but it doesn't hit me as hard. I guess Ghostface Killer's feature was more for the narrative of the song, but I usually tend to skip it because it's just sonically unnecessary in most cases for me, and I still can't get over the fact how Kendrick goes, yeah baby, but regardless, I like Summer Rocker's part, and the chorus is really catchy. Count Me Out, the first opening track on the second disc of the album, and a pretty good one. Not as good as the album's first opening track, but still good. It's Kendrick traveling on his journey to becoming a more happier and healthier person by dropping someone from his life that needed dropping. Not much for me to say about this one, honestly. I think it's a very solid song, but nothing much beyond that. Crown. Oh, <sighs> Crown. I think lyrically this song is very dense, as many of his other songs are. Here he's coming to the conclusion that he can't please everyone. He shows us a lot of self-turmoil on this track, a lot of personal inner conflict. But sonically, this is one of his most boringest songs yet. I don't come back to this one very much, but I can say I do like it a lot more when it picks up in the back end. Silent Hill. A very sharp left turn from the last track, but this one is just a straight bop. It's really refreshing to hear Kendrick expand his horizons and unsurprisingly master this subgenre of rap that you would expect any other trap artist to use. I will admit though, Kodak does outshine him on this one, because I'd say he has more experience with production like this, but still, great song. Savior Interlude Fully narrated by Baby Keem, this second interlude on the album discusses Keem's upbringing, recent experiences, and his overcoming challenges to get where he's at today. I really like this track, I think it's a great way to segue into the next one. Savior This is probably my second favorite song on the album if I had to pick one, it's so good. This track talks about how all these public figures and celebrities that we all look up to are still human, just like us. They're not our saviors. This is just another Kendrick and Baby Keem classic. Auntie Diaries This song introduces us to Kendrick's transgender family members, and the journey him, his friends, and family went on to accepting them. Kendrick narrates from the perspective of his younger self and how he and others felt about his auntie becoming a man, saying things like how every kid at school was giving him weird looks just because it was different to them, even leading to the use of the F slur, which is partially why this track is as controversial as it is. And then in the second half, his cousin transitions too, saying, Demetrius is Marianne now. And he describes how the church responded to that, the pastor even saying, the world we live in is an act on abomination and Demetrius was to blame, and then Kendrick critiques and corrects him because he fully accepted his aunt and cousin for who they truly are, like a coming of age story. Produced by the living legend himself, Pharrell Williams, we have Mr. Morale, the second title track on the album. There's not much for me to say about this track, if I'm being honest, other than that it's amazing and I love it. It gives me the same vibes as the Black Panther soundtrack. Mother I Sober. This and Auntie Diaries are the most heartfelt and emotional songs on the album, but this one probably takes the cake. Kendrick really opens up about his mother and the sexual abuse she horrifically endured and her fear for Kendrick being abused too. He even expresses his feelings of shame and despair that he holds to this day for when he cheated on his fiance at the time and compares the action that to of his mother's abuser. It's a heavy track for sure that overall encapsulates the same theme throughout this album, that Kendrick is a flawed human who makes mistakes, and this is his journey of finding himself throughout all of that. Mirror. Similar to To Pimp a Butterfly's Eye, Kendrick discovers self-acceptance and chooses himself. All of Kendrick's outro slash closers are so good, this one especially is no exception. Okay, if I had to do a ranking of each song, this is where they all stand right now. This is bound to change sometime in the future, but regardless, that was my review of Kendrick's fifth album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments below what I should cover next. It can be an album, but it can also be another form of media you would want to see reviewed. I'm ranking every Tyler the Creator song in my next video, so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure you know when that video comes out soon. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.